Hello guys, welcome back to the third part of the anime tower defense series. So in this part we are going to optimize a lot of things. We are also going to add a new module script that makes our life easier in the next couple of parts. Because we are going to use this a lot, so we want to make a module script out of it. So we can easily use it like a lot of times without having to write the same code over and over. So first of all, let's look through all the scripts we have and let's see if we have anything that is like doubling or that we don't need. So I think that the chances here are completely unnecessary. Do they even get used? Yeah, they do get used for the chances, uh, like for the chances, but we can just do like one simple thing. So let's go into replicate storage and create a new folder and name this modules as well. Let's create a module script inside it and let's name it to chances, just like this. Let's copy the name, paste it here and here and do chances dot. And then we can name it just chances or like a unit chances anything you like is equal to a table like this and then we can just paste the same thing in there so we just cut this out paste it in here then we can require the module script so we can do uh, local uh, chances is equal to then let's get the replica storage, call wait for child modules, call wait for child chances. And we need to require this because this is a module script. So keep that in mind. Then we can just set chances equal to chances dot unit chances. Just like this. And then we have the complete table. If we now run our code, you will see that there are exactly no errors just like we want it to be so then the next thing we can add is actually a thing for getting like the rarities so we want to make a new entrance and call this chances dot rarities is equal to a table too and we just want to put all these a again but we want to delete this put the comma here for every single one and we also want to put these all away like this so then we can write two functions so we can just do functions then we can do function chances dot get chance by rarity and this will accept a rarity that we can do yeah it just puts this thing for us so we might as well accept this so what this does is it basically just gives us the unit chance of a rarity then we can do two more functions function get all rarities and we can just do return Dot rarities. This is rather unnecessary, but also nice to use a lot of times. And then get all chances. Then just do unit chances here. Just like this. This is everything we essentially need for the chances module right now. As you can see, we already did this. Like change it. Um, let's see if anything else is doubling over here. 
but I don't think so. So, but we, what we can do is we want to drag the unit module inside the modules folder. Let's hit up Control Shift and F and search for unit module and see where it's being called. So, in here, so you essentially want to go to every entry that's in here. And because it's not in server script server, it's server script service column work child modules. You just want to change this for like every single script. So they all have column work child modules. And I think that was it. So yeah, then we change this too and organize this a bit. Just like this. So then we can hit play again. Let's see if everything still works. Let's just clear our inventory real quick. So we can start a fresh data save and test out if the units actually get added to us. So let's check in our player. Let's click the button. Of course, we also need to change it here. Or do we? Let me see. There is nothing in unit values. Let me check the reason for this. So essentially, this should be done in the leader stance. This is the right thing. This is also right. Okay, let's just revert this then. Because I don't know if, if it has like something to do with the proper service. Just make sure you drag this out again. It should be fine both ways. Let's just check. Yeah, now it works. I think it was just a problem with the profile service, which prevents you from like changing stuff in the folder. But yeah, the next thing we are going to add is also inside the replicate storage, another module script. And we are going to call this one. Mm. We might as well just call it UI module. And we can write like a few useful functions in here. So let me just copy this and this. So, so let's just continue with the next thing. And this module will basically be used for like, just like UI stuff. So it's useful to have this because as you know, in like tower defense games, there is a lot of stuff that have like the visual thing of the units, like, you know, like the border, what like the unit inside, the name, the cost, the level, everything. And of course we need to make a module script for this to configure it, to just make it just anything. But we also have a few other things that we can also do. So we can just do this real quick. So we are also going to add a few cool effects, which I found in like a tutorial on YouTube. I think it was called like, let me just look it up. So it's actually from a video from, I don't know how to pronounce it exactly. So from Stewie PFING, I don't know if this is right. He just makes like a lot of satisfying videos, like where he's adding effects that are very satisfying to like to use. So we're just going to add a bit of stuff from this video, which I like modified a bit. So yeah, we are first of all going to get the camera. So the camera is equal to game dot workspace away for child camera. So then the 
local blur is equal to light lighting dot blur. Let me just check how big the blur is. So okay, it's actually a size zero, of course. So we want to add a blur to the lighting. Also, let me remove all the default things. So we want to set the size of it to zero. Just like this. So let me just add a bit of stuff in here to not make it like look this ugly. I think this is a lot better. So yeah, we can work with this. So make sure you have a blur named blur in lighting with the size of zero. Then we want to go back here and then we want to set a, a TT, which is basically just a tween time. So this is a tween time. So let me quickly close my metal up because it annoys me when I want to make a comment and it just clips the last 60 seconds. This is kind of, uh, yeah, but yeah, so just let's continue on with the functions. So this will be animate gradient and this will get the gradient and the atom type. So if atom type is equal to spin atom, which is essentially what all the games use, you know, when there's like a border around something like it's just a border. Like, I, let me just show it to you. We are going to get to the UI like later on. You just have this frame and you have like a UI stroke that's like bordering around it. And you also want to make a UA corner, of course. So then this basically has a gradient. So a UI gradient. You want to make the color of this to white then you can go like a gradient you can do like in the middle is going to be red or something and then this is just like spinning around you know it's just like spinning it's spinning and spinning so this is essentially what we are going to add so and we can also add like a lot more things so while wait 0 0.05 to gradient dot rotation is equal to plus equal to five. You know, someone to make sure this is a gradient. So yes, the rotation. So then this is for the camera. Uh, so UI blur, it's essentially when you open a GUI, it's going to blur the background. And this is a lot like, this is very, very satisfying to have in your game. So yeah, function, we want to do UI module dot toggle. And the value of this is a boolean. So then if value is equal to true, then queen service call me. not call me with child by call create camera queen tween info queen info dot new tween time or tt I should say and then the field of view equal to 60 and we want to play this then we can copy this paste it put the blur here put the twin time there put the size to 10 and play it else we want to copy these two and just reset them to basic so zero and the basic fob is 70 just like this 
So then we want to, of course, animate gradients. So function UI module dot UI UI gradient effects, which is called like this for the player. So then for underscore every descendant in player called player, let me just tell this is a player so we can just wait for child and have to like write it out. Call get descendants do if descendants home is a UI gradient then if descendants come find first child which is a bool value then if descendants come find first child find first child which is a bool value Oh yeah, we just want to, yeah, we want to um, do animate gradient for the descendants and the descendants dot name, like this. Then we can print something, so success, fully animated, and then the descendants, dot name then with descendants dot name so if you don't want no one like what this means it's basically when you put a like a bool value inside a gradient and you can set the name of the bool value to any animation you have in here it's going to animate it just like this if there's nothing inside then it's just going to like not make anything so yeah then we can add one more module or like one more function or actually let's make it a new module let me make this to unit ui copy this paste paste and then function unit ui dot create frame or create unit frame for the unit which is supposed to be a string so the unit name I mean unit name which is a string and the player which is a player and the parent which is a frame or we just don't specify parents um this is the first function also we need of course a chance in here so local chances it's not required so let's just paste this in here like this So, yeah, we are going to use all these things a lot in the next episode when we get to like making the UI and stuff. But for now, we just wrote the functions to make the next scripting session easier. And yeah, so we basically just cleared everything out of the way to make the cool stuff in the next episodes. So make sure you watch them too. And yeah. See you in the next video.